In just over a month, Americans will head to the local polls and cast their vote in a historical presidential election. But there will be more on the ballot than the names you hear every day. Coming up, we'll have the details you need to know for November's general election. It was a big week for politics both on the national stage and even right here at the Texas Tech campus. Kylie Phillips will be in studio with the inaugural edition of MCTV's Inside the Issues. Students that will soon be heading out into the working world may feel prepared for a future job, but what about their networking skills? Find out how one campus group is helping calm nerves and improve social interaction with a biannual event. And Texas Tech football, volleyball, and soccer are gearing up for their next Big 12 showdown. But they aren't the only Red Raiders who will be competing on behalf of the Red and Black. MCTV's Todd Eldridge has a full rundown of the upcoming athletic schedule in sports. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Thursday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Elena Hajishvili. And I'm Aiden Lewis. Over the last few months, the national news has been flooded with headlines revolving around this year's presidential race. Election Day is still five weeks away, but Americans will soon have the chance to head to the polls and start the process of electing the next leader of the United States. Democratic nominee Kamala Harris and Republican candidate Donald Trump are currently locked up in a tight race. But on Tuesday, November 5th, many Americans will head to their local voting locations to decide which candidate will officially replace current President Joe Biden, who will step down after the end of his first term. Beyond the presidential race, there will also be other candidates and issues on ballots across the country. If you are registered to vote here in Lubbock, you will be deciding on one of Texas's U.S. Senator spots, the U.S. Representative for Texas District 19, Texas Railroad Commissioner, several Justice and Judge races, and even the Lubbock County Sheriff. There are also several propositions on November's ballot, including a special election to determine the fate of a $103 million bond package to improve Lubbock streets. Although the official election day is more than a month away, early voting starts here in Texas on Monday, October 21st and runs through Friday, November 1st. If you're registered in Lubbock County, you can vote at any polling location across the city. Here on campus, the Rec Center will host an early voting polling location that will be open Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and noon to 6 p.m. on Sunday, October 27th. If you're voting by mail, you can request a ballot from now until October 25th. But all ballots must be received by Election Day. If you're planning to vote in person on Election Day, polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., including here on campus in the sub. For more information on the November election here in Lubbock County, including a sample ballot, visit votelubbock.org. And for much more information about registration, voting by mail, or voting outside of Lubbock County, check out votetexas.gov. Gen Z fears the future of democracy. The VP picks duke it out on the debate stage, and Better O'Rourke rallies voters on campus. With election season just around the corner, MCTV debuts a new segment today. Kylie Phillips joins us with a look at all of those stories in MCTV's Inside the Issues. Kylie? Thanks, Elena and Aiden. The vice presidential candidates faced off in their first and potentially only debate this election cycle. It was a much friendlier exchange than we saw in the presidential debate, with both parties acknowledging that the country needs some bipartisan change. The moderators asked a series of questions on topics from the state of the U.S. economy to immigration and the issue of gun violence. After falling under controversy, both VP picks attempted to show their running mates in a better light and clear up some previous comments. The Republican nominee, Senator J.D. Vance, focused on the threat of censorship, immigration, and Republicans working to change the narrative on certain issues. My party, we've got to do so much better of a job at earning the American people's trust back on this issue where they frankly just don't trust us. The Democratic nominee, Governor Tim Walz, focused on a women's right to choose, gun control, and the 2020 election. This is basic human right. We have seen maternal mortality skyrocket in Texas, outpacing many other countries in the world. This is about health care. In Minnesota, we are ranked first in health care for a reason. We trust women. We trust doctors. In almost 30 days, Gen Z will head to the polls and cast their ballots for the first time. Presidential campaigns have been strongly targeting younger voters this election cycle, as they'll be making up a new demographic. 
Focusing on social media, the candidates are trying their best to stay relevant and beat the old age allegations. From participating in trends to memeing their opponents, they've gone above and beyond to catch the attention of Gen Z, but these voters may have already made up their minds. As for the issues they care about, U.S. News reports that over two-thirds of young Americans say that inflation and the cost of living is their top issue, followed by reproductive rights, gun violence, and climate change. Former Congressman Beto O'Rourke is visiting campuses across the state to mobilize young voters. He was at Texas Tech earlier this week. He said that in Texas, no one is expecting Gen Z to turn out and vote, and that's why it's so important for you to show up to the polls. The former congressman is working with Powered by People to register college students. Once registered, that every voter has what they need to be able to cast that ballot. So. Where's my nearest early voting location? When does early voting start? October 21st. Um, what kind of ID do I need to be able to cast that ballot? Um, these are things that we are equipping these students and young and new voters with to make sure that they feel fully confident in casting that ballot. The state does not offer online registration, so if you're a first-time voter, you're going to have to mail or hand in your application. If you're a Texas resident and a college student at Texas Tech, you can register to vote in Lubbock County or head home to cast your ballot. Powered by People offers nonpartisan voter registration assistance, or you can reach out to Tech the Vote for help registering. The deadline to register to vote is Monday, October 7th. That's a look inside of this week's issues. Now back to Aiden. Thanks, Kylie. And other news, students interested in improving their professional social etiquette recently had a chance to be a part of a unique biannual event here on campus. On Tuesday night, the Texas Tech University Career Center hosted the fall edition of the Mocktail Party. Students started lighting up at 5.30 p.m. at the McKenzie Meerkat Alumni Center to enjoy free food, mock drinks, and the chance to network with local professionals. An etiquette trainer was also on site to give tips on how to improve communication skills and learn how to get the most out of similar situations that often happen in the real world. But unlike the real world, the mocktail party takes place in a no-pressure atmosphere that allows students to have fun while enjoying some hors d'oeuvres. Tuesday's event was the first of two mocktail parties scheduled for this school year. The spring edition of the mocktail party typically takes place in March. Last weekend, Texas Tech students welcomed their loved ones to campus for Family Weekend 2024. The celebration featured dozens of events and options for Red Raiders and their families to fill their time both here on campus and around Lubbock. Friday marked the first day of the weekend festivities with many colleges and university groups hosting events that gave families the chance to connect with faculty, staff and other students. Here at the College of Media Communication, an open house took place in the first floor eSports lounge from 4 to 6 p.m. The event included free refreshments that attendees could enjoy while learning all about the college. So we are just here, this is a very informal come and go event where our families can come and mingle with faculty and staff and um, really just get some free swag and do a building tour so they can see all the opportunities that we have to offer here in the building. Along with media communication, other colleges hosted events where families could find out more about the departments, facilities and people that contribute to the Red Raiders education. Architecture hosted a day in the life with Huckabee College. Arts and Sciences invited guests to the new Academic Sciences Building. And Agriculture offered a Davis College family night in the Dairy Barn. The West Texas weather has felt like a bit of a broken record over the last couple of weeks. Temperatures have been warm and skies have been clear most of the day. There is no Texas uh, Tech football home game for the first time in three weeks, but will conditions still be nice enough to enjoy other outdoor activities around the area? Chief Weather Specialist Elizabeth Herring joins us now in the studio with the details on what we expect this weekend in the MCTV forecast. Elizabeth? Thanks, Elena. It's been a gorgeous day here at Texas Tech University. The skies are nice and clear. I know everyone is enjoying the sunshine. It is a little bit breezy out there. You can see some movement in the trees, making for a gorgeous afternoon. Well, the tr well, we are not the only ones enjoying this lovely weather. The trees also looking nice and green outside. However, that could change potentially within the next couple weeks. We normally see foliage change here in Lubbock around the mid-October to late November time. If you're down south a little bit towards the Odessa Midland area, 
it's going to be more like early November. And if you're more in the Austin area, could see leaves changing as late as the later parts of November. And if you're down on the coast, we usually don't see freezing there. So trees stay green all year round. Well, today, tonight across the South Plains, lows in the upper 50s, lower 60s, Snyder 64, Turkey 60, Demet 52, Plainview 53, and clear skies. Tomorrow, warming up once again, another sunny day, highs in the 80s and lower 90s in some parts of the South Plains areas. Snyder 90, Turkey 90, Matador 90 as well, Demet a little bit cooler, 86, Plainview 86 as well. More than 88 in sunny skies. As we look at tonight here locally in Lubbock, low of 58 degrees. Tomorrow, warming up once again to 89, almost 90 degrees and sunny skies. As we look at our weekend, temperatures looking relatively the same. Saturday and Sunday, both highs of 90, lows in the upper 50s. So a gorgeous weekend if you have any outdoor plans. But do keep in mind if those plans are in the morning, it could be a little bit cooler. So go ahead and bring a light jacket or sweater with you. As we take a look at the rest of the week, remaining sunny Monday high of 88 and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday high of 90 and lows remaining in the upper 50s, lower 60s. Saturday is an away game for Texas Tech versus Arizona. It's going to be in Tucson and that game is going to begin at 8 p.m. start of the game warm with a temperature around 90 degrees and sunny skies halftime cooling down to the mid 80s around 85 end of game lower 80s around 82 degrees so just keep that in mind beginning of the game is going to be warm and while that may seem hot to some the high temperature in tucson on saturday is 101 so just keep that in mind as you're making any plans before the game i'm elizabeth and it is back to elena and aiden Thanks, Elizabeth. With the weather continuing to look nice in the near future, this is a great time to get out and enjoy one of the South Plains' many outdoor activities. And if your Saturday morning is free and you love to shop, plan on taking a short trip outside the Lubbock city limits. Every weekend, the Wolford Farmer's Market hosts more than 100 local vendors just outside Lubbock's closest neighboring town. The market opens every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and features fresh meats, produce, eggs, and flowers along with baked goods, locally roasted coffee, handcrafted gifts, and much more. Vendors set up weekly large outdoor area either inside permanent rustic barns or under tents, selling locally grown and produced items. To thousands of area shoppers, Emily Pikert, co-owner of Pikert Farms, has been a longtime vendor at the farmer's market. She says the weekly event has not only helped grow businesses, but is also a great environment to make connections with other small business owners. There's an amazing community out here. There's an amazing community of vendors, of shoppers. This is our fourth year doing this, and we have just absolutely fallen in love with the people, and we have had a booth in a couple different places around here, and no matter where we are, we have just loved our neighbors. The Wolfworth Farmer's Market is open year-round, regardless of the weather. Vendors vary from week to week, with new items sold seasonally. The market sends out a weekly email update to customers, including a list of vendors who will be participating each Saturday. For more information on how to sign up for the weekly email, visit WolfordFarmersMarket.com. As we mentioned earlier, the Texas Tech football team is on the road this weekend, but there are several other events on the sports calendar happening right here on campus this week. MCTV's Todd Eldridge has the details on how you can catch those matchups in person with the preview of even more action coming up on Texas Tech's athletic schedule in sports. Todd? Thank you, Aiden and Eleni. Tech Athletics has been rolling through a busy beginning to fall, so let's get you caught up on all the action. Saturday, Tech football held off Cincinnati's late surge to cling to a 44-41 win. Late in the game, A.J. McCarty got his first career interception, and it was a big pick six giving Tech padding on their lead late. Cincinnati's Nathan Hawks missed a game-tying field goal to try and force overtime at the end of regulation. Next up, Tech will look to continue their conference streak, heading to Tucson to take on Arizona in another late-night game this Saturday. Here is Coach McGuire on the challenge of stopping a prolific Arizona offense. It's going to be a great game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, if you're an offensive fan, I think you're going to see two really good offenses go at each other. And, and I think both defenses, uh, you know, are going to have to – it's going to be what defense steps up. And, 
you know, we, we need to we need to step up and we need to continue to uh, create some turnovers to help our offense. Kickoff is scheduled for 10 p.m. locally on Fox. And remember, if you head to Tucson to cheer on the team, obey traffic laws and be sure to stay overnight. But if you're staying in Lubbock, there are two other games on campus for you to cheer on your Red Raiders at this weekend. First up, the Lady Raider volleyball team looks to get back in the win column as they take on Kansas State tonight at 6 in the United Supermarkets Arena. While tomorrow night at 7, Tech Soccer tries to continue their win streak taking on in-state rival Baylor at the John Walker Complex. Both games are available through Big 12 now on ESPN+. In other action this past week, Tech Tennis sent three Lady Raiders to the ACU Invitational and they all captured singles titles. Maria Laola, Arena Oreschenkova, and Elena Daskalova combined to drop just one set collectively. And Oreschenkova captured her second straight ACU Invitational title. Next up, the Lady Raiders head to Fort Worth for the ITA Texas Regional next Thursday. Men's Golf closed out the Ben Hogan Invitational yesterday, finishing 12th after shooting a total of 27 over par. Senior Charlie DeLong recorded his first top 20 finish of the season. Sophomore Ben Gregg started to put things together in the final round after struggling in the first two. And freshman Connor Graham continues to impress in his final round, shooting four birdies and his first ever collegiate eagle on the 639-yard par 5th 11th. The team will be in Hockley this weekend in their final fall action at the clubs of Houston Oaks. Todd's tough guy this week is Ben Roberts. He posted an impressive 12 tackles, a QB hurry, and a forced fumble in Tech's victory over Cincinnati and will be looked at to anchor the defense this week in Tucson. I'm Todd, your resident non-trad sports nut, and that's everything new in Tech sports. So don't forget to stay up to date by checking out MCTV Sports every Monday and Thursday. Back to you, Aiden and Eleni. Thanks, Todd. So, Eleni, do you have any plans this weekend or going to enjoy any activities? I can't. I'm going to Dallas this weekend. What about you? I think I'm probably going to stay in Raiderland. Arizona's too hot. And that's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you next week.